I'm not even sure how to start this video, but I'll give it a go in anyways. We're talking about the defeat for Sunderland against Cardiff City at the Stadium of Light, a 1-0 snatch and grab win for the Bluebirds, as I... Yeah, that's what their nickname is today. Anyways, snatch and grab is a little bit of an understatement. Sunderland dominated in this game for 86 minutes. So it's about capitalising on the chances that you get. We can't do that if we don't vary our play style to, to come up against teams that have that defensive game plan. They weren't as deep as QPR, don't get me wrong, but they did have that mindset of let's drag out a point out of this game. They didn't attack at all for the, the entire like 90 up until like that corner that went, that went in. They had their first shot on target in the 88th minute. That shows you how little Q, uh, how little Cardiff offered in that game, never mind Sunderland's threats. Um, yeah. They set out for a point and they got all three. So I can't I can't really blame the Cardiff fans or um the Cardiff players for sticking to their plan. I would take a one nil scruffy snatch and grab win against any opponent. Don't get me wrong, but it just feels so crap being on the receiving end of it, especially when we were just attacking constantly. The down the left wing we had the absolute dropping of them, Clark and Huggins. Down the left hand side, swap, basically swapping each other around, one twoing, um, cut throughing into the left hand side of the 18. And very unfortunate not to get some, some goals or assists off the back of that. But I don't know. It, it's one of those things like we've got a definitive play style and it will work against teams that will struggle. We will pick up a lot of wins playing like this in a lot of games this season. So. It's just when you get the teams that actually gel together and can stick to that style. Cardiff are on the up and up. They've now won three on the bounce off the back of this. And oh, this has got to be the one that I think they would be most proud of because they, they didn't look in it. They didn't do much at all. Um, they didn't bully us all that much compared to some other teams. They didn't try and roughhouse us. They just stuck to what they were told to do by their gaffer and... It ultimately worked so yeah i think i don't want to drag it out too much because this one's just going to infuriate me if i keep just micro analyzing key points in it but yeah my man in the match is definitely going to be huggins um he was just so creatively there um poorest performance or lapse of judgment their goal purely came from an, a needless corner con to concede and the the, the the dive for it from Patterson, I'm. What was he doing? It just felt like he was diving like a salmon, um, and then allowing the ball to go around the corner because he just he dives, but then he like holds his hand back and he just flops at it. It's really weird to see that kind of save attempt. It just looks like he he goes to shepherd it away, thinks it's going around the post, and it ends up in the back of the net. And that that to me was their only real chance of the game. After that point, they were more attacking minded. They didn't want to sit back as much and they kind of got at us. If that goal happened a lot earlier in the game, I think it would have been a completely different story as well because they were attacking more and that meant that gave them that um, confidence that they had the luck in this game rather than Sunderland. So, yeah, in the 90, I think it was in the 91st, they had a shot and it hit the, hit the post. And then in the 94th, they um, had their second shot on target. So Cardiff didn't really come into this game until the very last minute. But like I said, if you're going to be winning games and they're going to be scruffy for Cardiff, that's one of the ones that you'd love to have on your record books. Um, we did the live stream, obviously, and we had a couple of um, <laughs> some uh, Bluebird fans in there. And they were saying they were going to win throughout it, but I, you just couldn't see it. Some of them were that dominant. And... It's just just shows to show it just goes to show unless you're putting the ball in the back of the net, it doesn't really matter how good you're playing. Um You know what, let's just get into it. The deep dive on how we are playing. So we are very creative, we were very attacking, but we are struggling for um adapting to using that new striker in the uh, up front position. Burstall was so isolated in that box, he barely got any crosses to him. Um, 
the two times that it was going to him, it was long balls from the back, from the defence into him, and he was holding it up very much like, oh God, he's a, what's his name again? Josie Altidore. He was just holding that ball up strong, powerful, but there was no other option into there, and he needs somebody else up in front to be that creative outlet for him. So we need two strikers. We've got two strikers, and we're struggling to adapt having them in the gameplay. Um, Mia Samedo, when he came on, again, breath of fresh air, shots were coming in. He was looking for a couple of passes here and there, but his primary focus was to have a, a pop-back goal, and eventually one of his pops will end up in the back of the net. And for me, if Bursto and Hamea are playing together, those two will absolutely terrify defences. It's just not in the current playbook for our team. And like I said, against most of, most opponents, this kind of playstyle will work. But for the ones that it doesn't, for the ones at the top half of the table, probably playoff places or above, like what if you're going to think the team's going to be in those kind of spots, they can definitely frustrate us in those games. They can offer us plenty of opportunities, but if they're defending deep, we are struggling to find the gaps. That's that's ultimately it so if we've got more players further up the pitch or more players in those danger areas the defenders are going to be dragged away from where they need to be or they're going to compact and it's going to give people like Pritchard an opportunity to have shot from range Equa if he's fit um Clark and Roberts and Barr and all of these players that are on the outside rather than feeding into the, the the two people that are there they've got the opportunity to shoot and those two people in the box have the opportunity to sweep up it's just we haven't got the tactical adaptability at the minute with the current squad. We want to play the 4-2-3-1 formation and it does it does us fantastically. It suits a lot of our players. But we need to have a second option. We need to have a plan B because what was it? There was Southampton. We do we just there's no there's no such thing as a plan B or whatever that phrase was. Just do plan A better. That's clearly not gonna work for Sunland if we're gonna keep on. Um, coming up against teams, QPR did it, Ipswich did it, Preston did it, <laughs> and now Cardiff did it. Those four teams all went ahead, all beat us because they parked. They had so many people behind the ball and we couldn't break it through. So let's try and improve our shooting game from range or um, have more options in the box, dedicated strikers in the box rather than keep on trying to cut in. Because Clark bless him i guess i constantly had to do too much work and he is trying to break past a lot of people same with huggins today as well like clark and huggins on the left hand side for me it was fantastic um which again is why i've picked huggins as my man in the match they just they fed off each other they broke past the um the right back um and the right winger We're cutting into the box and it was just like that, that killer pass needs to be there um so yeah, that, that's that, that's kind of my overall perception. I do I'm not concerned at all. I'm a little bit frustrated by the result, but it's one loss. We've had three, and it's against good opponents. So let's not get too negative. Um, let me know how hopeful you are still. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the Sheffield Wednesday game because that one, I think we should absolutely roll through the opposition. But again, if they park the bus, we'll be frustrated and it'll be a 1-0 one -nil, one -nil snatch and grab opportunity for them. So let's adapt a little bit. And that's a direct message to Tony Mowbray. Adapt your play style so teams don't know which version we're coming up against. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And until next time.